Have you ever felt like you've lost a piece of your heart when your pet passes and you'll never be whole again? Losing a pet is hard enough, but how do we go on afterward? Our pets teach us how to live life fully, but they don't teach us how to live life without them. Hi, I'm Tammy Hendricks. I'm an animal communicator, compassionate medium, and healer. Welcome to my channel. I'm glad you're here. Today, we're going to talk about grieving the loss of your pet and how to find true healing. One thing is certain, everybody will experience loss in life of some kind. It's just inherent to life. Loss in its many forms, whether it's the loss of a loved one, a loss of a relationship, a job loss, or even loss that occurs with emotional changes in growth. They all impact our experiences and our emotional landscapes. Loss tears the web of reality forever. Things will never be the same. Even our perception of time can change during the loss. It can seem like time is frozen or we're in a time warp. We kind of are. When our loved ones transition, we transition with them. I call it forced soul growth. Losing a pet can be especially devastating because they provide unconditional love and so much more. How many of you have experienced the loss of a beloved friend? I feel that animals have the ability to touch us so deeply that even in childhood, if we've lost a pet, it can impact us the rest of our lives. Having experienced early losses in my own life, ones that profoundly impacted and changed me, as well as many, many animals who have crossed over, I've realized that the way through is learning how to navigate, not avoid loss. It's not an easy task when grief comes barging through the doors of our heart. Grief is a constellation emotion. I often call it an umbrella emotion containing many, many different emotions within it. It's never just one thing. That's why it can feel so powerful and so debilitating. You know, when we grieve for our lost pet, we also grieve for all the other previous hurts, losses, disappointments. They all come in to join. It's because they're trying to move through and grief opens the doors to your heart that allows all these other pieces to come up, to be looked at, to be felt, to be seen. So grief slows us down and forces us to fo focus on our feelings that we may have tucked away a long time ago, thought they weren't there anymore, things that are in our inner world. When we grieve for one thing, we grieve for many. Grief can feel like being lost. The familiar things that we've known you know, are gone, their presence, their smells, their sounds. Oh, the silence can be deafening. We long to touch their soft fur, hear their purr, see them sleeping in their beds just one more time. When grief is new, it's common to replay the last moments of your pet's life over and over again. It can be torturous and it's natural to feel exhausted physically, emotionally, spiritually. It can feel like your soul is just weary and you have soul exhaustion. Things that are so important and seem so important, they're not so important now, they're trivial. You might also experience these changes in appetite, sleeping patterns. You know, it turns our world upside down. If you're grieving, you may say, I feel out of control. Uh, I'm isolated. I'm extraordinarily lonely. It can truly feel like we're living in the twilight zone and a permanent one at that. It can also seem like life isn't fair, especially if your pet passed suddenly or tragically. We often reflect on how that passing happened. I frequently hear my clients say, it shouldn't have happened that way. And I know for me, I have said that too with some of the animals who have crossed over. So one day... I asked myself this question, well, Tammy, how would you have preferred for them to pass? And I asked my clients the same question because what I discovered is when we give ourselves permission to have opinions, even if we couldn't control the event, it honors our part of the experience too. I know I've had plenty of opinions about certain animal passings, all the while knowing 
I'm not in charge of their soul and they have their own soul path, but it still felt good to allow my heart to speak. No one can hurry the process and provide a magic cure for grief. It's extremely intimate and personal and the grieving process follows no schedule, no rules, no timetable. I remember after my mother passed being in a mall and all of a sudden a wave of grief hit me and tears came and I had to just stop. It didn't really make any logical sense in that setting. And just as we may be feeling a bit better, grief can knock us down like a wave. It reminds me of when I was in Hawaii, I was walking along the shoreline and the waves were super strong and they were hitting my legs and my feet kept like burying in the, the sand and I kept trying to get my balance and so I kept racing against the next wave and the next wave so I could st stand upright. You know, finally what I realized that if I succumbed to the waves, it was just a relief. It was like a letting go, a relaxing into. The first days and weeks after your pet has passed are powerful for the veil is very thin between this world and the other side. Your pets in spirit are going through that transition with you. While they cross the rainbow bridge, which is an energetic bridge of transformation, you crossed it as well. During this in-between space, you may have dreams, certain memories may drop in, you may find yourself asking deep questions, reflecting in an afterlife review of what really matters most. What's important about my life? Why did this pet who changed my life come into my life and leave? You have enhanced access to spirit during this time, a deeper connection. It's the time where life has seemingly stopped and hasn't begun again. It's a, what I've always called, it's a poignantly beautiful space. Out of the compost grow the loveliest flowers. Grief is a stopping point along our journey, but somehow we have to find a way to navigate or it swallows us whole. While we can't change what happened, we can work with the energy and the vibration of loss. So how do we do that? How do we navigate life's losses and grief? We tell our stories. Our stories contain our history our blueprints for living and dying. Our stories are gateways, healing nuggets containing both the painful history and the potential growth. Our stories lead us straight to the essence of any situation. Grief has a story to tell. It wants to be heard. When we meet grief, and the narrative is actually heard in the space of presence, a natural unwinding occurs. We carry the history and the energy of who they were forward. You carry the history of your pet. You. And that's important to know that you hold their legacy, what they meant, what they came here to do. The connection's energetic. It can't be broken. You can't undo your connection with your pet. Healing is all about perspective. Often we exclude ourselves from the story in an objective way, or we tell it as if we were the main character. I help people see from their animal's perspective too, which is often totally left out in recounting the trauma or loss. I know I discovered that when I had a pet named Sasha pass tragically, suddenly, and I did not agree with how that went down at all. It was a while before I could connect with her. And when I did, I shared my perspective and I was shocked that she had one too. When we see it from both perspectives, our focus becomes more personal, more heart-centered rather than on what happened or the event itself. That's where we get hung up. I'm going to give you a tool to help you shift your perspective and start the healing process. This is especially useful if you feel like the ending didn't happen the way you'd like for it to. You may want to take a minute, grab pen and paper to do this exercise. You may want to do this later. So first, tell your story in its entirety. 
We all have a version of events. I know I did about Sasha, especially traumatic ones. A, this is what happened version. Our stories contain hidden gems of healing, ones that reveal our deepest emotions and potential next steps. Because our emotions in any story show us what is trying to be heard and what message is trying to be sent. It doesn't matter where in the story you begin. Let your heart guide you to what hurts the most. Write everything you can remember, everything you felt, what details you noticed. Let your heart speak. This allows for the grief to be recognized and heard. During the grieving process, we experience many, many emotional heart shapes. The animals taught me that term, and it's important to honor them. We may have a grieving heart shape. We may have fragmented. We may have a sad heart shape. We may have a heavy heart shape. We may have a hopeless heart shape. All these pieces. We may have an angry heart shape. All these pieces, all these emotions are gathering together. Each one has a voice and a message to share with you. Two, ask this question. What would I have wanted to happen? I think that's a really important one. Giving ourselves permission to disagree with what's happened, even though it doesn't make logical sense, or where we would change the script, helps us hear our resistant thoughts in a way that doesn't shame them. I think there's so much shame around our feelings and our emotions that come up during this very important period. We bring them out into the open. And again, as I said, I know I've had disagreed many times with how something went down. Three, complete this sentence. If I could have you in my life just one more day, I would detail all the things you would do that you didn't or want to do again. One more day, what would it look like? Different memories are going to drop in when you do this. Feelings and images may spring forth. This allows you to honor the special moments. Now, shift your perspective slightly from your pet's perspective as if they were telling you this. If I could have stayed longer, I would have. Imagine what you think your pet would say. What would your pet long to do one more time? Allow your pet to speak through your heart. We often don't think about the pet's perspective. But I promise you they have one, and lots of them, actually. Finally, write a letter to your pet, starting with their name, and then I promise to honor your memory by, and then name all the ways that you'll continue their legacy, that you'll share who they were, that you'll actually share the gifts they gave you. Finish up by thanking them for the many gifts they shared and name them. Why this exercise is so powerful is because we connect with the energy of the narrative and tap into the space where it's most active. The energy of grief knee buckling as it is, if used properly, can be rocket fuel for our spirits to heal and soar. Our pets and spirits are closer than you can think, closer than you can imagine. We're often waiting for that hello after they pass. From their perspective, they never said goodbye. While you grieve, which honors the deep love you have for them, let them guide you in healing your heart. I hope you've gotten something out of this today. I know I enjoyed it. If so, please like this video. And if you've really gotten something out of this, subscribe to my channel. Next week, I'll be back to share more messages from the animals. You won't want to miss it. See you then.